Australia goes to the schools and we plant trees with the students. What a beautiful day. Gosh, we're so lucky. Yeah. Aren't we lucky? Now guys, we're going to head over in this direction. We actually want the students to plant the trees themselves so they actually get their hands dirty. Can you tell me why we should plant trees? What are you going to say? They give us food. They do give us food, don't they? Yeah. Who else do they give food to? Um, the animals. Animals and birds. Yeah. So all the berries and the nuts and the seeds and the flowers. Animals and birds use all of those things, don't they? What were you going to say? And they also feed us too. They feed us too? So yeah. So fruits and vegetables that we eat yeah. come from... Like apple trees. Like apple trees. That's right. Absolutely. What were you going to say? Um, so you can also... The animals also use the trees as their habitat. Yeah. Habitat. Great word. So habitat is... An their animal's home. home. That's right. And their home also, might be... Birds and other animals put like, build nests in the trees so then they can lay their eggs. What is a good thing about planting a tree? They help us breathe. To breathe, that's right. It's super important, isn't it? Without trees, there's no air. Yes. And when we breathe out carbon dioxide, that's like their oxygen. It's like that they breathe in. Yeah. That's exactly right. And then when they use that carbon dioxide to grow, they make like a trunk. And that's made of wood. And that wood is actually mostly made out of carbon. And carbon is the main thing in carbon dioxide. So when we're planting trees, we're helping to take that carbon dioxide out of the air. What is carbon dioxide? When it's carbon dioxide, it's like a type of gas. When it's a tree, it's a solid. Okay, so as a solid, it's locked away and it's not in our air anymore. So that's one of the reasons why trees can save our world because they can lock away that carbon, take it out of our air, and then we can use it for things like wood, or animals can use it for homes, all positive things. And that's one of the ways that trees are really, really brilliant is that they lock away that carbon, take the pollution out of our air and can help us when it comes to climate change. So at the moment we've got climate change, which is something that you're hearing all on the news and it sounds really scary. Do you understand what climate change is? Yes. It's getting warmer, isn't it? And also we're getting more crazy weather, like crazy floods, crazy rain, or what happened a couple of years ago, before it got really wet and rainy? What happened? There was a lot of bushfires. There was. And there was also uh, no rain for a while, wasn't there? Can you remember what that word is? Drought. There was a drought, wasn't there? Grasses and trees were dry, yeah. and they didn't have water. Everything was dry, things were um, yeah. like dying. A house even got burnt down from a bushfire. Yeah. Quite a lot of houses, actually, all across Australia. Yeah. What we're calling more extreme weather. So we're getting hotter days in the middle of summer. We're getting more likely when it rains to really rain hard and maybe we get floods. The problem is with urbanisation and cities is that we have a lot of artificial surfaces, concretes and roads, houses, roofs, and all these things um, are really good at absorbing heat and holding on to heat. So they don't let the temperature cool down naturally like green spaces and plants do. So by just increasing the amount of artificial surfaces and decreasing the amount of plants, we are going to get hotter air temperatures. And that is what is becoming known as the urban heat island effect. And in some places it's quite extreme. And this has a heavy impact on on humans on people because they can't cool down at night they can't recover from a hot day and that has been shown to have serious health issues they're all becoming really really hot seasons not every school's got air conditioning not every kid's got air conditioning at home when they get home and they haven't necessarily got the space to cool down and that makes it really difficult for the students to concentrate 
makes it difficult for the teachers to engage the students because they're not in a good mind space to be able to learn. So it is really important to green up the schools. Plants have a process called evaporative cooling, which is part of photosynthesis, where they actually evaporate water into the air, and this creates a cooling effect. All right, so we're going to be planting some trees today. Yeah. 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 And what do we have to do to keep ourselves safe while we're planting trees, do you think? Who's got some ideas? What are you going to say? You put on gloves just in case if you touch like the soil and there's like bugs in it. I think of gloves like shields for our hands, like magic shields. Yeah, so you can get your hands all dirty. You don't have to worry if there's anything sharp in the soil, anything like that. What else do we need to think of to keep ourselves safe? Do you think? <coughs> well. Because it's a beautiful day, the sun's out, it's lovely. And then we should? Sunscreen. Sunscreen's a great idea. We don't want to get too hot and we don't want to get sunburnt. And we wear our hats. And also, what about our feet, do you think? What might be important to think about with our feet? What kind of shoes have I got on? I've got big boots on. Always have my safety glasses on too. It's the same with my pants. I don't want to get poked or bitten or stung by anything and I want to keep my feet safe. So what are we going to do when we're moving around today? Do you think we should run around like crazy people? No. No. What about uh, walking sensibly? Yes. Yes, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? And what do you think we need to look for when we're moving around on the ground? What do you think? So we have to make sure that we don't step in any holes or where, or where like we plant uh, like plants and then we like ruin the plants and they won't grow. If we see a plant we should walk over it. Now that is very sensible because when we dig a hole to plant our plant in, if we then don't realise it's there and step in it, we could maybe twist our ankles, fall over. So we're going to be careful where we walk. We're going to make sure we wear the correct things to keep ourselves safe, hats, Gloves, good shoes. Is there anything else we need to think about? What have we been saying for the last two years? Do we have to wash our hands after we plant? Absolutely. Wash our hands after we've finished today. We must wash our hands, even if we've got gloves on, okay? And that's because there might be bugs, bacteria. We might have even shared some gloves with somebody else by accident and we need to make sure our hands are clean before we do anything like eating or touching our faces, okay. Most of our plants are tube stock, which are actually quite small when they go in the ground, like maybe this big, but they grow quickly. That's the best size to plant a tree because they actually grow a lot quicker than a bigger tree, which takes a long time to settle into the ground. Guys, me and my friend Jacqueline are gonna show you how to plant one of your little tube stock plants. So Jacqueline's had some experience before. Plants have been in the tubes for a while, so the roots are starting to grow into the shape of the tube. They're just dying to burst out. It means it's a little bit stuck in the tube. So the first thing Jacqueline's gonna do is just give it a squeeze all the way around the tube, just like that. Perfect, good. Just loosen the soil up, loosen up those roots. Perfect. That's it, that should do it. And now all she's gonna do is just pinch the base of the stem right there. So not in the middle, not up at the top. So you pull the leaves off right at the base and then you're just gonna pull the tube away and I'm gonna pull too. There we go, out it comes. You can see all the um, roots um, growing into the shape of that tube. So before we stick that into the ground, what we're gonna do, just grab a handful and just pinch and pull away just so we can, so we can spread those roots out and they can grow nicely into the soil. Yeah, a few more pinches, spread them out just so it doesn't look like a tube anymore. Excellent, we'll pull it a bit that way, splay them out. You know the next step, Jacqueline? Yeah, chuck them in the hole, excellent. So I've already got the holes dug for you guys. If the hole's still a little bit too shallow, just pull some, some of the dirt out with your hands. And then make sure it's nice and straight. It's not down too deep, it's not up too high. Make sure the top of the soil is level with the hole. And now Jacqueline's gonna push all that soil in. And make sure it's standing up nice and straight and tall. Perfect. Make sure the soil's nice and compact and hardy and then you can push some of the mulch around over the top of it. And then you're done. Hand you some fun and just find a hole 
over there. to worry about with that one. Yeah, this one's a bit tricky because you haven't got a solid stem to hold on to. There we go. It's really important in schools that we don't plant really big trees that are likely to drop limbs. We also screen them out for poisonous berries or thorns or allergens. We plant native trees primarily. We try and plant trees that are local to the area where we are. So there might be up to 50 different species that we plant. Acacia trees. We also plant um, bottle brushes and grevilleas, which are the sort of garden favourites. We also plant probably less commonly known plants. These plants are great habitat for our birds and our insects and of course our animals. Jackie, let's go find another hole. So these are big trees. You can see this one over here and that one over there, they're the same. They've got these nice big glossy leaves. They're called brush box. Brush, brush box. box. Can you oh, see the roots? Yeah. Whoa. Whoa! That's good. That's good for our, our plant, isn't it? If there's some worms and things. There's little ants living in oh, there. I wonder, I wonder where the worms are in there. We have to be careful to make sure that the top of the root system here is at the same height as the soil around it. And we need to make sure we push all the soil into the hole so there's no air bubbles. It's so planty. So not only are you planting trees so that your little environment will be nicer, it'll be shadier, it'll look better, it'll be more fun to play in, it will also help to save the world because we'll be taking all that nasty carbon dioxide out of the air and making it into trees instead. So pretty win-win. Can't think of any reasons not to do it, can you? Yeah.